Okay, this is part 20 of Federalist number 10. We start with the paragraph that says, It is in vain to say that enlightened statesmen will be able to adjust these clashing interests and render them subservient to the public good. Enlightened statesmen will not always be at the helm, nor in many cases can such an adjustment be made at all without taking into view indirect and remote considerations, which will rarely prevail over the immediate interest which one party may find in disregarding the rights of another or the good of the whole. That sentence is extremely important. The fact that he says, enlightened statesmen will not always be at the helm. Helm, like the person who who's at the helm of the ship, ship of state, okay. a person who guides the state, who is the leader. He says we cannot expect the leader to be always enlightened, to be wise. We have to set up a system, establish a government that will take into account the fact that maybe a fool will somehow find a way to get in the office and be, let's say, a president or hold a very powerful seat in the Senate or the House of Representatives. He says you cannot always guarantee that these people are going to be enlightened. They could be fools. They could be having agendas of their own. So we have to set up a system that in case there is a majority, and this majority is going to violate the rights of minority, the system in place will stop it. The division of power, the balance of power, because you cannot, let's say, count on a leader, count on just the leaders to be making sure that things don't get out of hand. So that is, what, that is the beauty of the system in this constitution with checks and balances, division of power, judicial independence. Now as we go along, we will talk about the, uh, the problems that we can see with the system. The system is not faultless, that is for sure. But we will see, we will, uh, we will f talk a little bit about maybe something can be done about it. After all, we are doing this project to see not only the good things about the American system and then the rest of the federal system, but also the vices of this political system what goes wrong, what has gone wrong, and what the scholars, what the practitioners, people that themselves were in office at one time, what they say about what could be wrong with this system. We're not going to be blind followers and blind admirers of this system. We're going to find out what the weaknesses are. But it, at this point, we'll just have to learn the basics. That's why I don't bring up a lot of the mistakes that we can see in the way that things work right now. So in the next short paragraph, he says, the inference, the inference to which we are brought is that the causes of faction cannot be removed and that relief is only to be sought in the means of controlling its effects. So, in a free society, you are not going to be able to eliminate the causes, the reasons that factions form. They are going to form. If you want a free society, they are going to form. 
So what do we do to stop the bad effects of it? That's where I guess we got to focus on, Madison says. says, forget about not having factions because it's going to happen. It's part of human nature. We are self-centered. We look <clears throat> after our own self-interest first before we look after the self-interest of the society. There is no way around it. He says, history teaches us this. So we're just going to have to find a way to make sure that it doesn't ruin the system when it happens. So we're going to... Uh, relief is only to be sought. Relief is only to be looked for, searched for, in the means of controlling its effects. We want to just control it so that it won't damage the system, damage our freedom. So in the next paragraph says, if a faction consists of less than a majority, relief is supplied by the Republican principle, which enables the majority to defeat its sinister views by regular vote. So if a minority has sinister plans, bad plans, evil plans, in a Republican government, the majority can stop them. You can just outvote them. It may clog the administration, it may convulse the society, but it will be unable to execute and mask its violence under the forms of this constitution, of the constitution. He says, yes, the minority can clog the system, can kind of slow down the progress of the system. It might convulse the body. Just like when you're sick, real sick, you might have convulsion. It might make the body sick, body politics sick for a little while. But you can eventually, under this Constitution, stop it from violating too many things and damaging too many things. But here, when it says, when a majority is included in a faction, the form of popular government, on the other hand, enables it to sacrifice its ruling passion or interest both the public good and the rights of other citizens to secure the public good and private rights against the danger of such a faction and at the same time to preserve the spirit and the form of popular government is then the great object to which our inquiries are directed. Let me add that the that it is the great desideratum by which alone this form of government can be rescued from the opprobrium under which it has so long labored and be recommended to the esteem and adoption of mankind. This line down here, desideratum and opprobrium, that is a line actually a few months before Madison even went to the Constitutional Convention. He wrote to George Washington and used the same sentence. So he'd been working, he'd been thinking about this for a long time. He says, now what if a majority forms the faction? In a popular government, in a direct democracy, okay, they can just run over everybody, not respect anybody, and do what they want to, and they say, who cares? It's our way or no way. So he says, this is where we have got to be wise, and we have been wise in this Constitution. We have thought about the solution, okay? The desired solution and this opprobrium, this, this shameful thing that they've done in these state legis states, in the 13 different states of the United States, he says, we've seen that when a majority has gotten power, they have not cared for the minority, whether it is in their religious beliefs that they will not respect minorities' religious beliefs or other things. He says, we have seen it, so we have to find a remedy for it, and that is what this Constitution does. That is what we have done. 
So again, uh, constantly in this Federalist and the rest of the Federalists, Publius, Madison, Hamilton, John Jay are very realists. They do not trust human beings to put the interest of the society before their own interest. They say, no, human beings are self-interested. They are thinking of themselves first, so we cannot expect an enlightened person to become our representative or senator or president. They have to build the system in a way that even if two parts of it were either corrupt or corrupted for a short time, the system won't fall apart. You'll have checks and balances. So that is the very important thing that we need to keep in mind. Okay? And then we will go to the next paragraph in the next video.